I think Mike Wilson was very honest. He said, look, we don't want people to lose their jobs. That's not the drum that they're banging. But he is talking about a much more aggressive series of layoffs before he would call the bottom in this. Costs have got to come out of the market. How brutal does unemployment rate have to rise to, Chris, to say those people to call a bottom in the equity market and a turn by the Fed? Well, I think it's probably well regarded that a, a sort of two percentage point rise in the US unemployment rate would be thematic of a of a decent or a, a somewhat prolonged recession. Um, obviously, then people just need to make the assumption of, of, you know, the technicalities between soft and hard landing and those various factors. But I think a sort of a 2% rise gets us into sort of 5.5% or so, which is actually, you know, longer term, still a reasonable level of unemployment. Um, but I think that would be the sort of thematic that we'd be looking for in this run as a possible worst case scenario. Of course, you yeah, know, recessions eat on themselves. People talk themselves into recession. It changes people's behaviour. Um, but I think at the moment, the base case, and, and you know, I'm, I prefer to sort of trade the conditions, is that yeah, we might see a, a rise over the next sort of 12 to 18 months, but probably two percentage points uh, to the unemployment would be you know, kind of thematic of where we might go to in this run. We're going into the midterms tonight. A lot of speculation the Republicans might take the Senate. Um, in theory, that delivers more fiscal tightness. And in theory that would maybe put in a near-term peak in the longer end of the market, in the bond market. Um, overnight, if the Republicans do uh, exceed to a slightly more powerful position, what would it mean in your mind? Yeah, like I, I think from a trading perspective, there's two ways to look at this. Do we get the information on the night or do we get it sort of broken up into pieces and we, we may not get the full outcome by the end of the week? So that makes it hard to sort of trade. Uh, so to answer your point, though, you know, I think the market's probably been looking at the polls, the betting markets and saying that the Republicans have a pretty good chance. Well, they've got a very, very good chance of getting a house. It would, it would be a really big surprise if they didn't take the house. Uh, where there's a point of conjecture is do they take both chambers of Congress and, and take the Senate? It looks like they probably will based on the polls. And so I think you probably break that into two near-term scenarios. And, and that is, if we were to see a, a US recession, I heard you talking about you know, different strategists talking about the idea of how, how likely that's going to happen. But the need for fiscal response will obviously increase the deeper this gets. And, and, and a divided Congress or yeah, the, the, the Republicans in Congress and, and Biden making the, 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 the initial decisions means that we're not going to get really any of that support that perhaps we'd need. And that, that should limit the bond yields. I think you're right. You know, that could keep terminal rates fairly sanguine. Where the surprise comes is if the polls obviously are completely wrong uh, and the Democrats build on both of their, their leads in, in both chambers, in which case, if the US mm -hmm. did need fiscal response, obviously, then, then they could do something, obviously, with the constraints of inflation. The debt ceiling is a debate, um, but I think that they, there, there is enough money to keep the government funded you know, probably well into next year. Um, and then, obviously, they've got the, the, the extenual uh, measures as well. So, you know, it is an issue because the Republicans have obviously said that they want to be more fiscally prudent and cut back on spending. So the debt ceiling could be an issue, but it's not something... I mean, it's kind of like trading China. You know, we're trading China because we're trying to put on the trade uh, now to understand if there's conviction about reopening. It could be early, it could be aggressive, but that's what you'd be doing with the debt ceiling effectively is when does that, that become an issue? And clearly it's not for now. So unless you saw a Democrat clean sweep, um, I, I think the rates market would be fairly sanguine by what they're seeing. Um, let's see, uh, maybe the dollar will, will, will take the strain in the overnight, Chris, uh, in the very first sort of risk reaction. You mentioned China with the big note yesterday. Goldman Sachs called 20% upside on the stocks if you get a full reopening. I've got a, an oil note this morning saying uh, they're restocking in China. Don't want to misquote Goldman Sachs, Chris. Uh, <laughs> China's boosting its crude imports. Uh, on a full reopening, they can see uh, an upside of another $15 on crude. So very bullish mm. narrative on oil, bullish narrative on equities. Are you preparing for a quasi reopening full reopening are you trying to get out get ahead and participate because money's still flowing out of china we see net sellers by foreigners in november and indeed the biggest outflows since 2020 in the last month which i know is behind the most you know that that lags the most recent set of notes how do you trade that reopening yeah. Yeah, look, it's difficult again. I mean, nothing's ever easy. Nothing's ever linear in this situation because it's not just going to be overnight. We see a binary situation where they come out and say, you know, everything's open. You know, get involved in China again. 
Um, it's going to be very staggered. It's going to be very measured. It probably, I think Goldman's made the point that it probably wouldn't happen until after the two sessions, uh, which happens in March. And that, that may be where it's going to be. But of course, we live in the future. We, we always live in the future, six to nine months in this case. And, and we're trying to look at all the different types of news, whether it's the US audit around ADRs, whether it's you know, stuff that's happening um, around quarantine measures for new, uh, new people, new drugs that are coming in to, 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 you know, for, for foreigners in, in China. There's just so much going on that we're saying, you know, look, the, the, the conviction with putting a trade on right now has just increased a little bit. It's certainly enough to cover those short positions and make you think about those short exposures, those bearish bets, which, of course, have been such a good trade this year for a lot of people. So I think we've seen a lot of short covering coming through. Um, it's aggressive if you get in now and trade that 20 percent potential that we saw. Um, but, you know, I think that it's, it's definitely going to happen in my mind. The question is, okay. when do you put on that trade?